What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. So today I'm gonna to show you the process for turning this ugly, giant, built-grade fireplace mantle into this. Beautiful built-ins with a new mantle, and the best part, there's actually hidden built-in hooks to hang your stockings at Christmas time. And they also tuck away into the mantle when you're not using them. If I do say so myself, this was pretty genius, and it actually took me three weeks to try to research how to do this piece alone because I was hoping to find tutorials on YouTube, but no, 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 there was nothing that existed. So I actually had to figure out the design on my own. Um, but after using it now for several months and after Christmas, I absolutely love this feature and the extra time building it was totally worth it. And unlike other stocking holders, you can actually fill the stockings up and the hooks will support the full weight of everything. So if you've got some time, keep on watching and I'll walk you through all the steps that I took along the way to build these built-ins. Or if you just want some built-in inspo, here's a nice little glamour shot that you can snap a photo of. So first off, I had to remove the mantle from the wall, which is basically scoring the edges of the caulking between the mantle and the wall and taking a pry bar to push the mantle away from the wall. So my plan was originally to keep the tile and then just apply the stone over top of the tile, but when I took the mantle off the wall, the entire thing came off in one piece and I was left with bare bones, um, which probably made it better in the end. I did it properly. Um, anyways, I had to put up some cement board to fill in all the gaps. You can't just put drywall around here because it's not fire rated. Um, I did a combination of cement board as well as some fire rated drywall just around uh, to fit in some pieces. So cement board is actually really easy to cut and install. Just make sure you wear a good mask. Um, but you score it the same way you do with drywall. So for those of you experts out there, I didn't actually end up finishing the cement board and the drywall since my plan was to put built-ins all around in front of it. So my plan for these built-ins was to tackle it in phase. Um, one, so I could eliminate the amount of mess um, and actually keep the living room usable since it is a big project and we're in there every day. Uh, so I started by building the base cabinets. I had to cut out the flooring to install the base for my cabinets for an easier way to keep them level. Um, and I also built my cabinets from scratch. This was probably, no, not probably, this was definitely the hardest part of the entire build. So if you can buy pre-built cabinets and then just trim them out so they look built in, I would highly recommend this. Um, this also took me the longest out of my entire project to get these um, squared and level and everything and just look good. So I decided to build inset doors with a face frame to match my drawers from my mudroom locker built-ins and this took a long time too to get everything lined up properly and it's still not perfectly aligned but um, it looks like it from far away. So here's my little makeshift paint setup. I did use a paint sprayer for most of this project and I used some large drop sheets in my garage so I had a little bit of a larger space to spray and I ended up just taping them to the frame of the garage um, because it was just a little bit easier that way. So to build everything, I used three quarter inch Baltic Birch shop grade plywood for the entire build and then Douglas fir for the trim um, because it was the perfect size and it was cheap. So the next step after the cabinets uh, was to move on to the vertical shelving units. And this was way easier than the cabinets. I used half inch MDF for the back of my boards um, only because I had some laying around and I just tried to use up all the scraps that I had already. Anyways, um, I built the sides and then the back and I used a cleat system to build out the shelves and secure everything together. The cleats drilled directly into the studs as well to give extra support. I used pocket holes to screw everything together and uh, yeah, again, this drilling into the studs was definitely my friend. This is what the inside of each shelf looked like and honestly, if I could do it all over again, I would have made my shelves about a half inch thinner. I was afraid because of how wide my shelves and my cabinets were that it would look silly with uh, just three quarter inch, but um, looking back on this now and looking at it right now, the I think I did two and a half inches, it's a little bit large. So just for your reference, I wasn't sure if I wanted divided shelves or just two shelves straight across. Um, so I did some photoshopping for those of you wondering what it would have looked like. But I'm actually happy that I went with the divided shelves because it makes styling them just a little bit easier and a little more clutter free because everything kind of has a designated space now. So the paint sprayer that I used for most of this project was the Wagner Flexio 3000 um, and it cut down on painting the large pieces significantly. I ended up doing one coat of primer, sanding in between all the coats, and two coats of paint. So now that the main pieces of my build were complete and functional, I moved on to the stonework next. This was pretty easy but very time consuming um, because I had a wet tile saw and every single cut I had to go from inside, ran outside, and back inside to uh, put it all together. So the stone alone took an entire weekend. Uh, I started from the bottom working my way up, cutting one section of time to make sure it fit properly. 
The stone that I used was from Lowe's and it's called the Avenzo Iceland Crystal Leadstone. It's actually real stone and the cheapest price that I could find. It came out to like $150 for all of the stone and I think I used five or six boxes total. So to fill in the gaps in the stone, um, instead of using a trowel and kind of shoving it in there, the easiest way that I could actually find was to take a pastry piping bag, fill it with a grout, I cut a small tip, and then I was able to press and maneuver it into the small gaps, then just smooth it out with a wet towel or my fingers. Um, it's probably a little unconventional, but it definitely worked. So after the stone, I put up a quarter inch MDF behind the TV. Um, again, this was only because I had to cover the rest of the cement board. You could likely skip this step if your wall was actually finished. I was going to do plank walls, but I figured that might look a little bit too uh, busy, so I, I'm still happy with just doing the flat panel. So the last step of this build was the mantle. Now after I put up all the stone and I let it cure, I decided that I wanted to extend the mantle by an extra inch and a half lower, um, rather than messing up the stone, because so, uh, the extra one row of stone I would have had to cut it, um, align everything, so I decided just to makeshift an extra inch and a half section extending the mantle with the plywood uh, and it actually seemed to work pretty well. So that's why you can see an extra row of stone peeking through the mantle frame. Um, so in this shot you can quickly see how I rigged up the mechanisms for the drop down hooks. Uh, there's a lot of dry fitting here because once the mantle is or was actually assembled there'd be no going back to adjust the hooks without dismantling the entire mantle. Um, so here's a quick shot of how I got these hooks to drop down, but also sit flush when they're not being used. If you want an actual video for this detail, let me know. Um, again, I haven't seen this anywhere else, and these are working perfect now. So the final piece to finish off this build was to add crown molding and trim. Um, on the left piece here, you can see that there is a quarter inch round to fill in the gap after installing the crown molding, and on the right, uh, what the gap looked like without the quarter inch round. And finally, here's the finished piece. I love this build so much and it was completely worth the effort, especially for the cost that I paid. Alright, um, so this unit cost $1300 Canadian for everything, um, and that was also with me purchasing a brand new feather board for my table saw, and five extra sheets of quarter inch MDF um, for $50. I think I only used one or two sheets, so I've got lots of sheets for later on down the road. Um, I also purchased for this, because I ran out completely, um, a gallon of primer and a gallon of paint, and I have just under half a bucket, half a can left of each. So again, I still got tons of paint left over for future projects. I did end up getting a bunch of quotes before this build from different carpenters, uh, woodworkers, cabinet makers, furniture making people, and the quotes came in at around $4,000 to $6,000. And that also didn't include getting the stone and installing the stone and building out a mantle with hidden um, hooks in it. So I think I came out ahead for $1,300 Canadian. I think this was an amazing deal. Um, it brightens up the place so much because of all the white and there's so much storage. Uh, it's still trying to figure out how to style these spaces, but uh, the, the cabinets underneath is where we keep all the kids' craft stuff and all their toys that we want to have up here. So it's out of sight, it's close at hand, but it's all tucked away and I absolutely love this build. So this project took me about five months to build. Um, it was on the longer end, but that's because I had three full days to dedicate to this, um, and not even three full consecutive days. Half of that time was actually going to pick up my sheet goods and break it down um, and bring it back into the shop by myself and unloading it and all of that. Um, so I had about, I would say, one and a half to two and a half hours max at nighttime after the kids were down. Um, on the weekends, maybe when they were napping, I would sneak in an extra hour here and there. Uh, but that's the reason why it took me so long to build this. Uh, you could probably build it uh, quicker if you have more time consecutively together. I hope you guys found this, uh, this video a little bit helpful, provided some inspiration for you if you want to go ahead and do some built-ins yourself. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to send me a private message. I'm a lot more active on my Instagram. I post a lot of stories as opposed to actual posts on there. Um, so feel free to hop over there at Do It Like Dolly and send me a message as well. If you want to know more about my build, um, I can tell you everything that went wrong and what to avoid. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.